This video has been sponsored by Squarespace. So that's right guys, no more progress on the Bentley as of yet because we've run into a slight issue. Now, after fitting the bumpers in the last video, we drove it home and I thought I'd give it a bit of a clean. And then I then noticed that there was PPF and it was peeling along the bottom of this doorway here. PPF is like a paint protection film. It's like a clear sort of wrap and it's probably been on since the car left the factory. Now, as you can see, I peeled the rest off and it took the whole paint with it. Fantastic. So this leaves me with another dilemma and <laughs> another expense. But we also have some good news for the Bentley as well. Now check this out. This is the handbook for this Bentley Continental GT. Now if you watched the previous videos on the Bentley Continental GT, you will know that I bought this for £10,000. It had one key, no service history, and that's pretty much about it. But Andy, who's been watching the channel, has sent me an email and also sent me the service history with the handbook of the Bentley. So check this out. So in here, right at the back, we can see all the service stamps for the Bentley, which is on about 85,000 miles at the minute. And you can see 47 miles, we've got 973 miles, 4,089 miles, 12,000 miles, 19,000 miles. Few moments later. 1,000 miles, 75,000 miles by Bentley, and that's about it. So, we pretty much have near enough the full service history. So, what a bonus that turned out to be. So, shout out to Andy. He also mentioned in the email as well how this got crashed, because he was the one that actually crashed it. So, Andy said he bought the car on the 31st of January, 2020. So, he didn't have it that long. And then the car was crashed because a 17 year old in a Fiat Panda pulled out on him. And this Bentley was actually originally registered to the first keeper in Germany. So maybe Kath was German. So thanks Andy for the email, what an absolute legend. Now, we've got a few more fixes that we need to be doing today. Later on in the video, we actually end up here at Malibu Performance. You'll find out why in a few minutes, but a lot of the business at Malibu Performance is run online. And this is where today's sponsor of the video, Squarespace, comes into place. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your online business. So whatever it is you do for work or on the side of work, you're more than likely gonna need a website. Now when you've got a website and if you have customers from that website, it's important to stay in contact with those viewers or customers. This is where Squarespace email campaigns come into place. You can send really nice looking emails which stay consistent with the look on your website as well. Drag and drop images on there, you can drag and drop your logo on there. It's really easy and this is just one of many things that Squarespace can do and make it nice and easy and convenient for you. So head to squarespace.com now to start your website and when you're ready to launch, hit my link in the description box below to get 10% off your first website or domain name. Massive thank you for Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel throughout. Back to me. Now, a fairly common problem for all these Bentleys, as I've found out, is these roof linings sag. And it is really saggy and I just cannot cope with a car that's supposed to be from factory over a hundred thousand pounds with a saggy roof lining. So as I've said in like a hundred videos before, I'm not a mechanic, I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna give it a go at re-gluing the headlining, which means we've gotta get it out. So let's get on to it.
now here we have it. That was quite a bit of effort to get out and I dread putting it back in. Um, now apparently you can just peel this back and then we're going to use some adhesive and stick it all back down and then hopefully reinstall it. <laughs> as easy as that. Right, let's get to it. Okay guys, so this side is nicely stuck down now. Now I'm going to do this side and I'll sort of explain what I literally just had to do. So, let's get peeling this off. Once we have this off, we have all this foam which literally just completely perishes and then we've got the glue sort of on this side and then all we've got to do is peel as much as we can that we can get off and get all that off so it's nice and clean, ready for the new glue. This is the spray that we're using, it's just some macho spray adhesive off eBay where you get the best of things. Let's spray it on and let's give it a little test to see if it's going to stick to that. Right, this is ready to go back in there. I'm not going to bore you with filming that. Let's get it in. Three, two, one. It didn't work. So as you can see, it's pretty much ended up worse than what it did before. So it's pretty obvious that I don't know what I'm doing. So I took it to somewhere that does. So at East Midlands Autos, which is literally just down the road from my place, they've done loads of these roof linings before, and to my surprise, they pretty much did exactly what I did, but a lot better, and obviously I did clean it afterwards. Right guys, and that brings us to this exact moment right now, where it's absolutely throwing it down. It's just not going so well at the minute. You know what happens when we throw it down? We head to Mallory Performance, but right now, we need to see if the roof lining has stayed on, because I really don't want to take it down again, so I've, I've not looked, I promise, you I've, I promise you I've not looked. Let's take the camera and let's see, please. Here we go. Yes! It's on, it's still on. Come on. So the roof liner is still held up and there's no sagging. Thank God. Yes! Right. Let's get all the kit in here, let's head to Mallory Performance and I'll tell you what the next step is on the Bentley. So current consumption as we're cruising along, 7.4 miles a gallon. We have got just under a quarter of a tank left and 50 miles in range. Economical. So we are here at Malibu Performance as you can probably hear from the motorbikes going around the track and things just get a little bit better for the Bentley. I remember that centre cap which I paid about 100 quid for. Well, <laughs> it's gone. Wheelmania are on it with getting us some new alloys for the Bentley. So it's not that drastic, it just means that we've lost the centre cap which was about 100 quid. So you may be asking, why are we here? Why are we at the holy grail of car tuning? Well, we've made the rash decision about the Bentley. That's right, guys. We are wrapping the Bentley. No, there's absolutely no way it could be wrapping that car looking like that. I am commenting right now. So wait there, so wait there. Before you all start crying and be like, oh my God, he's wrapping it, why are you not getting it painted? Let me explain why. I got quoted to paint the full car from scratch with stripping every panel down around eight grand. And it's at quite a reputable company which, which paint Rolls Royces, Lamborghinis, the whole thing. So I know it was gonna be a good job. I may get other quotes which may be cheaper, but I was expecting that's gonna be the around the ballpark figure. This Bentley cost me 10 grand. Are you gonna spend eight grand on getting a car painted which cost you 10 grand? The answer is no. That then leaves you guys with the question is, but well, why don't you just get the bits which aren't the same color as the car painted black? Well, that was the original plan. The only problem you would have had with this is that 
painted the wing black and the bumper black and the rear bumper black would not match the black of the bonnet and the door. It would have really had to be blended in. If you're going to start blending the door in with the wing and then the wing in with the bonnet and there's a other, bunch of other imperfections in the car as well, you might as well have gone and painted the whole thing. So I then had the thought, why not get these, all these panels painted and then wrap over them? Problem with that being, if you have a car painted and then decide to wrap on it, you should leave it at least six months before you apply to the wrap. Else, exactly what happened with the PPF will happen to the wrap. You come to peel it off, you take the whole paint with it. So that le only left me with one answer, and I think it's the right answer and the most logical answer. I know how to wrap, kind of, as you can see from some of the previous videos. We wrapped the whole S5, turned out pretty good. We wrapped the Audi TT, turned out pretty good. Now it's time to wrap the Bentley. I could actually wrap this 16 times before it would cost me the amount it would cost to repaint the whole thing. Oh, what about the next owner? They might, they might peel the wrap off and then they'll see that it's a different colour underneath and um, it's, it's, it's rubbish, it's not good workmanship. The point is, this is my car, I can do this, I know it's a different colour underneath. The next owner is definitely going to know it's a different colour underneath because this car is all over YouTube. So I'm going to ask you guys to stay with me on this and keep the faith, even if this does anger you that I'm doing this, just stay tuned and hopefully you'll feel a different way once it's complete. Let's not take things all so serious there. So let me get this thing dry and clean and ready for its wrap. completely wiped down. Now I know what you're thinking, what colour are you going to wrap it? Well, it's a Bentley. So do we go bright or do we go subtle? Unfortunately, you're not going to find out in this video and I'm so sorry about that. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned for the next video on the Bentley where you'll find out the colour and hopefully we'd have finished it by then. So thanks for watching this video guys. See you in the next one. Peace out.